to optimize your cooking. This is your host. I am Heather Hackett Kaufman, and today I have a special guest. I have Jonathan Simos with me. So, thank you, hi, for Jonathan. Having me. Oh, thank you for coming here. Definitely. So, Jonathan, fun story. I met at the farmers market in Lakewood Ranch, of which went there. I'm always looking for vegan delicacies and something different I've never had before. Had their vegan spanakopita. Yes. Oh my God. It is to die for. It is absolutely phenomenal. And the story behind it is just as phenomenal. So I want to kind of, you know, talk about that as well while you cook. Absolutely. And I remember when I first met you, you said the fact that, you know, basically there's no, there is no bar as far as uh, what quality or lack thereof we typically find for Spanakopita. So yes. to say he raised and shattered and, you know, went through that is, is an understatement. Thank um, you. I appreciate so, that. After having it, I knew we had to have it. So you're welcome. You will thank me later. Um, but today we're going to find out how you make it. So definitely. So what do we have here? We can so start uh, the spanakopita, as uh, as you mentioned, the bar is set very low uh, in yes. America. It's usually a paper thin layer of spinach and traditionally feta cheese uh, and some other things. But in America, there's it's mostly phyllo dough. And so uh, my family's version is much more mixed and much more uh, greens. And so it's much more flavor. The vegan version, of course, is going to be onion, primarily onion and spinach, and then leeks and dill and olive oil, salt, pepper, and that's it. It's pretty simple. Oh, it's amazing. It doesn't taste simple. It tastes absolutely phenomenal. Yes, the so. flavors come together, so it's a nice complex taste, but, uh, but simple ingredients though, for sure. Yes, okay, well, let's get started. What awesome, we so we want to heat up the pan, uh, then you want to just add some olive oil, and okay. once oh, there it'll we go. come out. All right. Yeah, it's just well. And then once the oil is hot, you just dump in your onions first. Onions. Yes, you want to make sure there's enough olive oil in there, so it doesn't burn. So then the onions. I'm actually going to use all of these, about four onions, four yellow onions, uh, chopped up. So I'm going to dump those in. Perfect. A little more olive oil, mm -hmm. because I'm going to add all the ingredients. So then, turn this up a little bit to about between medium and high. Do you need the spurtle? Ah, uh, the spurtle. <laughs> yes. Spurtle. So then I just learned about this tool, the uh, spurtle. Uh, where's this from again? Scottish. Scottish tool. It's Scottish. Yeah. This tool is awesome. I'm going to get one of these. And it's got a cool name. Yeah. It's fun. <laughs> you got a spurtle every time. A so. spurtle. So while the onions are cooking, I'm going to dump in some, uh, some dill. And, uh, Which smells incredible by the way and not i'd say about if you get one bunch from uh that mm -hmm. use maybe i got about, two bunches oh two bunches good yes. um only about maybe half uh less than half a cup about a quarter cup so i'm just going to throw in a pinch of dill so about a quarter cup of dill a little bit more there we go so then as that's cooking together i'm going to add the leeks as well and we'll use a spurtle to dump some of these in. For the leeks, about a half a cup okay. of leeks mixed in there. There we go. And then it starts to smell really mm -hmm. good. Oh my gosh, it smells, and that dill just, it's so fresh. Oh just yes. bright and fresh and fantastic. For sure. I'm gonna mix it together with the spurtle. Sure. And <laughs> Got it? Yes. I'll add some salt and pepper. A little more olive oil. There we go. And we'll also put the amounts on um, on the below the video as well. So anybody looking on YouTube, look down. After you hit subscribe, keep looking down, uh, and the recipe will be there. That smells so good. Mm -hmm. And you want to cook this until the onions start to get a little brown, so uh, the mix okay. really comes together, the flavors. Uh, while that's browning, I'm gonna add some salt and pepper. And you can just season it to taste. Uh, I wouldn't add too much salt now. I would season it more after the spinach is added, so you can get more of a feel of how much you want. Okay. But uh, but not too much for this amount. Probably, uh, maybe like a t not even a a pinch of salt. Not a pinch of salt. Okay. So very little. Yeah, very little for this amount, depending on preference. So this should take about maybe five more minutes. But uh, really easy preparation. And you can actually freeze the mix. So uh, once you make the mix, if there's a lot left over, you can uh, let it cool and freeze it. Ziploc baggies, 
whenever you're oh, ready, awesome. you can thaw it out. Uh, yeah, very, very simple preparation. Yeah, that's super helpful, by the way, because I am a person that likes to prep once and then kind of figure out how else I can make it or what I can do with it. And if you can freeze it and make something with it later, great. Or we talked, uh, kind of brainstormed beforehand, the dumplings from last episode. You could definitely use this stuffing, make dumplings. You're going to want to use this stuffing for like everything after you, you have it and realize mm -hmm. how delicious it is. So you could do it for dumplings. You could just put it over pasta. Um, you said even there, if you want to, you know, put it in, if you do eggs, if you want to put it in scrambled eggs or that just egg or anything like that, or even put it with some potatoes for breakfast, options are endless. Whatever options you do have, though, put them on the bottom. Let's hear what you do with it. So. And it is getting there. But yeah, very healthy for sure. Mm -hmm. So once it starts to get brown, then I'll add the spinach to uh, cook the spinach down, and uh, then it all comes together. So talk about where this recipe originated from. Yes, so uh, spanakopia is a mm -hmm. traditional Greek food. Um, it's about a few hundred, few hundred years old, and um, they're not sure of the exact origins. I tried to research and find out the exact origin, yeah. but no one really knows the true origin. But uh, Greece has spanakopita, their version. The Middle East has their version, Israel, Turkey. Uh, even Eastern Europe has a version that has meat in it. It's more of like a meat pie. Oh, okay. So um, similarities, but um, true spanakopita is Greek, and uh, it traditionally has these greens, mostly spinach, feta, a little egg in the mix to bring it together, uh, salt, pepper, and then usually they use butter between the layers. But um, I just use olive oil on all my variations. And then the vegan one came about because living in Sarasota, there's a really big vegan population. Mm -hmm. And aside from that, with the movie coming out, the documentary, The Game Changers, uh, a lot of people became more aware of the benefits of being plant-based, including myself. Sure. And so then we started making, uh, I started making a vegan version. Took out the egg, took out the feta, um, and it really, I realized how delicious it was and how Which healthy it was. Which do you eat? Which one do you eat? I'll do, I'll do both. I'll do the yeah. regular and the, and the vegan. Uh, just depends. I'm trying to eat more plant-based though. Yeah. Perfect. Well, you can yes. definitely do it with this. Oh, yes. Sure. You are not lacking flavor or taste <laughs> or delicious yes. or anything with this sucker. So. That's true. Almost ready. So mm -hmm. about another two minutes on the spinach. I'm going to spread this out so it cooks a little faster. There we go. Perfect. Now you with your family... Didn't you travel around and try to find the best versions uh, and variations? And Yes. So um, growing up, every couple of years, we would go to Greece. So um, my dad's from Greece, from a small village called Ismia, between Corinth and Lutraki. So it's on the Corinth Canal. Okay. And uh, my mom is uh, Greek-American. She happened to be half Greek when they, uh, and just happened to be that way when they met. Um, but I don't speak Greek because they never spoke. I never learned it. Um, but to answer your question, we would go every two years, two or three years to Greece, visit family, travel a little bit, and I love trying all the food, especially spanakopita. Yeah. And it was fascinating because there's so many variations. Some have uh, some rice in there, which takes out the moisture. So oh. uh, some people put some rice in there, a little bit of rice. Uh, then some people put more onion uh, or less spinach. So there's all different variations. But I found this recipe to be my favorite. Who came time. up with the recipe? This is my father's and his friend's, uh, Dimitri. And so of the course his name is Dimitri. <laughs> I mean, come on, Greek. And then my father's name is Soterios. So two very, yeah. classic Greek names. Yeah. Very, very Greek. <laughs> Soterios and Dimitri. And actually one day I'm going to include, uh, I was going to make a label with uh, little animations of them, the two of them. I think oh, it's I love that. kind of a good Dimitri and Soteri. <laughs> Absolutely. To include them in this. But uh, I just added the spinach. I'm going to add a little more olive oil. Sure. And it might seem like I'm adding a lot of oil, but I'm really not with this little spigot here. It's just uh, drizzling out. Now, but if anybody's ever <laughs> cooked down fresh spinach before, um, you will know why he uses frozen. Because if you were to use fresh spinach, you would... Oh my gosh, it would probably take, I would say, five of those big <laughs> containers yes. to cook down into that. So definitely for this one, don't be afraid to go frozen. Um, it's, it is definitely the way to go, I think, and you do not at all lack on flavor as far as this one goes. So, so 
Have you ever made it with fresh? I fish? have. Yeah. I have. And you're right. It did take. Um, I got a couple of large bags, thinking it would be enough, and it just cooked down <laughs> to like two Nothing. cups. Yeah. Yes, very small amount. <laughs> Uh, so completely right about that. And the, the flavor was the same. I actually yeah. made an organic one uh, with organic spinach, cooked it down, and it tasted exactly the same. And uh, same consistency, same everything. Yeah. So, yeah, frozen is definitely the way to go for efficiency. Yeah, we'd still be dumping in handfuls. <laughs> That's true. This is actually almost done. So it's cooking together. It the smells. Flavors. Oh, my gosh. Phenomenal. And then... Mm. In another couple of minutes, I'll actually just let it cool off, and okay. then I'll season it, a little more pepper, a little more salt, uh, and then wrap. That's it. Awesome. Not a lot of oil. Not a lot of oil, not a lot of salt, not a lot of pepper. ton of flavor. I mean, it smells very green. It's just phenomenal, but very clean. Like, I love how clean this is. So, and not only that, but the, the one of the things I really loved about it was the fact that this recipe, and we'll talk about that as well, as far as, you know, needing something to dip it in. I think that's probably, uh, you know, I don't want to say misconception, but you think you would need it, and you, you absolutely don't. This thing is, as Tommy said, is, is very juicy. It's phenomenal. It holds its own, you know, so you don't need um, anything to put with it because there is plenty in there. But it's nice because the plate wasn't greasy by any stretch. I mean, there was no grease. But it was all contained, all inside, and very juicy. So it was, it was fantastic. Definitely. The, uh, thank you for that. Oh, are you, thank you. You're <laughs> in my kitchen making it. What uh, are you talking about? <laughs> well, yeah, the, uh, the moisture from the onion, the spinach, you're right, it all comes together. So yeah. it's, not, it's not dry. And we have also had the frozen ones. So we've tried the frozen ones and baked them as well. And perfect. I mean, it really comes out perfectly, so yeah. so don't be afraid to freeze it. You're not going to lose anything on there. You're going to gain sanity. Um, uh, if yeah. anything, we have one in our freezer right now, and I'm sad that we only have one, but um, got, I will get more. Yeah, absolutely. More. Yeah, but, <laughs> but it really does, so don't be afraid to freeze it. And this actually should be pretty good. I'll okay. let this cool off a little bit. That's going to be toasty. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm going to grab a glove for the pan. Oh, there we go. Yep. Perfect. Okay. So. okay, so now we have taken the spinach off the stove and we are cooling that to get ready for, as Tommy would say, the master to go to work. Uh, so let's see what you do. What are you doing? So you let the spinach cool off and once it's cool, you take your phyllo dough and your phyllo dough is normally frozen and uh, you want to leave it in the uh, refrigerator to thaw out because if you put it in, at a room temperature setting, it'll thaw out too fast and get um, it's too soft and potentially soggy. So you want to thaw it out in the fridge and only pull it out when you're ready to use it. So then... Nobody wants soggy phyllo dough. No, no, nobody wants soggy phyllo. So then you take your phyllo dough out and put this away. Oh, thank you. I got you. <laughs> you want to unroll it. And there's all different types of phyllo. I personally use a thicker phyllo from uh, Gordon's. It's uh, from a company called Contos. It's much easier to work with. So it's a thicker phyllo dough. I'll take this and spread it out into a giant square. How do you know if it's thicker or thinner? Uh, they have different levels. So they have different numbers. Oh. This is uh, number 10. Number 10, which means that it's the thickest phyllo they have. Uh, then they have like number 7, which is thinner. And number 3. So they have all different I types for, for baklava or whatever kind of specialty you want to make. Um, so I have this giant rectangle. Then I'll take a sliver off the side. So uh, normally we'll do uh, right about here, about an inch off the side. You can just cut it down the middle, but then it'll be a larger spanakopita. And it's already a pretty good size. So then I'll take a sliver off the side. And that is trash. Thank you. Then right down the middle, you can measure or just kind of eye it. I think this is perfect. You cut it down the middle, and once you cut it down the middle, you just stack it. There we go. Stack the two halves, and you are good to go. That's it. So then, this is the fun part. So uh, you take a layer. Okay. You could actually try just it too one? if you like. No, no, I'll use uh, three layers. Oh, okay. I've done it with two before, but two is a little bit uh, more delicate, and also 
it's not as beautiful when it comes out. It's a little more... It's all about being beautiful. Yes. That top layer really kind of puffs up to make it more of a presentation. So first layer of some olive oil. You want to brush each one just enough because if you don't put olive oil, it doesn't stick when you roll it, when you flip it. So first layer, second layer, we'll put that right on top. Oh, so that's just one. Okay. Oh yeah. That's just one layer. So the second one, olive oil once again. Now, why do you put olive oil in between each one? Uh, you want to make sure it, I think it helps bake better, but also when I flip it, it will stick and so it won't fall apart. Oh, um, okay. I'll show you that last layer. I'll show you why the, uh, why it's important. I bet you had a lot of trial and error with this one. Huh? <laughs> oh yeah. This took a lot, a lot, a long time to learn. So um, if I were to wrap it, see how it wouldn't stick, it would just kind of slide around. Oh, so the okay. olive oil on top, when I put ah. that, it kind of forms like a little uh, adhesive. So when I take a scoop, so that's perfect, it just seals it much better. So then my spoon, like the spoon, a little scoop, about a half a cup or more, depending on preference. So I'm gonna fill that up. There we go. I'm gonna press it down a little bit in the corner. So not in the middle, more towards the bottom left corner because you're gonna flip it a little bit more. There See we go. what I mean? These suckers are jacked. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of mix. Yeah, much more than that paper thin layer most yeah. places have. Then you grab the corner and you flip it, but you wanna even it out so you press, and you make sure that the corners have mix in the corners. You don't want an empty corner. And then you grab the corner and you flip it. This is so satisfying, this part. <laughs> then you flip it, it just flips so evenly. Then you kind of press down so it doesn't spill out. And then you flip it and one last flip. And you have the perfect Bam. golden Beautiful. triangle. <laughs> and the nice part is too, you can tell as he's doing this that there really isn't a lot of oil in this. There is so little to where um, I would imagine you can't have it very oily because it would seep out and yes. um, it, get that soggy and quite frankly, I think be a little gross. Yes. But, um, yeah, it's, it's not at all. I mean, you can tell even sitting on the pan, it's very dry. You know, they're not dry like no, too dry, but dry <laughs> like no oil dry. And so. if you happen to add a little water to keep it cook or there's a little too, mo too much moisture, sometimes mm -hmm. the spinach can have more moisture when it thaws out, uh, you can always strain the mix before you wrap. That's important too. Um, you didn't see him do that, but he definitely, you know, he was wringing the spinach out to make sure all uh, the, yes. the liquid was out of it. So very important part. Don't just take it from the freezer and drop it in the pan or you're going to have soggy phyllo and nobody likes soggy phyllo. Yes. So. Once you thaw out that spinach, you want to um, squeeze out the moisture and then put it into a pan so it's much uh, easier to work with. And so is your dad proud with what you're coming up with? Yes, yes, and he's helping Aww. me out as well. And uh, he's definitely becoming more and more a part of this as, uh, as it gets bigger. And he's helped me much. In the beginning, he would make the mix. Uh, he would help me make the mix and rap. It has been amazing. I couldn't do it without him, for sure. Now, I met your brother last week at the farmer's market, and he mentioned that you were after the recipe for a while. And uh, it took a while to... Yes. To teach you. It's a funny story. Um, he didn't take the idea too seriously, which I can't blame him because I was always really entrepreneurial, always a dreamer. Um, but it was a little challenging because he would uh, he doesn't use exact measurements. So I would watch him make it and I would be like, don't throw the pepper in yet or don't throw the dill in yet. Let me measure it. And he'd be like, he'd just throw it in the pot and keep mixing. Yeah. And I'd be like, oh, I didn't get to measure it. And he'd be like, uh, he kept saying the same thing, you know, I, I don't measure, that's how I cook. Yeah. Uh, which is more of that old, you know, Greek mentality or a lot of people have that, that mentality with in the kitchen, you know, doing it by taste, doing yeah. it by. Yeah. So uh, it took me like six or seven times to get the recipe down. I had to add a spoon of this and then in my notes put, you know, plus one spoon, plus half a spoon, kind of add it up. It's a trial and error. So it's but then special. you really perfected it at that part. If you're doing an extra spoon and an extra whatever, you're really trying to master it. So oh, yes. Yeah, I, think, sure. I think he has, quite frankly. <laughs> if you make this, you'll get it. He, he's totally mastered it. Thank so um, also while we're talking about and while I'm thinking of it, if people want to visit you or see your information in your website and all that other stuff, where are they going to go? Um, I, my website is greektriangles.com. So uh, just spelled uh, G-R-E-E-K triangles. Uh, spell triangles.com and you can actually submit orders and right now I'm only accepting orders um, 
I mean pickup from the markets to make it efficient. I used to deliver, but it wasn't quite efficient. So if you submit an order, you can pick it up at the downtown Sarasota Farmers Market on Saturdays or downtown Bradenton on Saturdays uh, in season. Then Lakewood Ranch on Sundays and the Meadows on Sundays in season. Uh, soon I'll have shipping though. I'm working on shipping next. Oh, awesome. So pretty soon. So uh, sit tight, it's coming. <laughs> yes. And I was going to throw these three in the oven while I make a couple more. Okay. So I'll scoop this up and normally I use gloves, but this makes it a little easier this time. There it's we okay. go. <laughs> I saw you wash your hands like 50 times. He's good. Thank you. This does look good. It's the perfect ratio of onion to spinach. You definitely want to be able to see the onion in there. And you can always add a little more onion or a little more leeks depending on preference as well. So keep that in mind. And add actually one more scoop. There we go. And then it takes about 20 minutes at about 365 in an oven. But you want to put olive oil on top. So olive oil on top, 365, 20 minutes or so. Once it's golden brown and crispy, then you want it to cool off because uh, it has a lot more flavor once it's cool. All right, so we'll put some olive oil on those and bake them. Yes, you want to put a lot of olive oil on top. So it gives it a nice color. And of course, this bakes off so it doesn't stay like this. It just makes it nice and brown. You want that, trust me. It's <laughs> worth it. Oh, yes. Totally worth it. Perfect. Let's see. All right, that. we'll throw those in the oven. There we are. No, you said 365, but this is 400. Uh, is it okay? 365 to 400, depending on the oven. And that should be perfect. They are done. So, yes. Well, let's take them out. It is time. Nice and golden brown oh, and crispy. Amazing. There we are. Perfect. They are absolutely perfect. Don't burn yourself, please. No, no. <laughs> I don't want to have liability insurance on uh, this one. <laughs> no, that worked out okay. well. So they're nice and golden brown and crispy. Um, and of course, you can bake them to your preference level too. If you want a little less mm. crispy, a little more golden brown or darker, however you like. Uh, but I'll show you how. I'm just going to grab a... You like darker? Lighter. What do you uh, like? I'll do this one in between, actually. And... And again, no grease. I mean, you're fantastic. They're so clean. Perfect little triangle. And they're pretty, um, when they're out of the oven, this just came out of the oven, but it's still, the outside's not too hot, but the inside's like lava. I was going to say, are you burning your fingers <laughs> right now? <laughs> no, no, but the inside's like lava. So you want it to cool off before you eat it. And it has more flavor once it's a little cool. And if you want to cut it, there's a little technique. Instead of just coming straight down and breaking the phyllo, I'll go right in the middle halfway and cut it like that. And then on the other side, and it doesn't break it as I much down the middle. I never knew there was a technique. <laughs> uh, I learned the hard way because people would ask for it cut in half, and then I would try right down the middle, and it would just crush it. Yeah. And it wasn't... Uh, Jelly donut. Uh, yeah, ex exactly. Yep. Then down the middle, and it's a perfect little cut, and it looks beautiful on the inside. Look at that. I mean, come on. Look at all that spinach. Yes. Seriously, it is a full meal. Love so greens. that's the best part. Oh, perfect. There we are. So we have one for presentation. And then and one. And then we got to try it. Yes. That's the best part. For sure. So then one more right down the middle. Ken's got the camera. I think I see a little drool. <laughs> Clean that up, babe. Clean that up. There we go. And so three parts to cutting it. Last step is making sure you cut it all the way through. And then, so do you eat these with a fork or do you just go at it? Uh, normally, uh, you just like a burrito. It's like a, it's like gotcha. a Greek burrito. I hate to call tilt, it that. But. Tilt your head and then go to town. Yes, basically. All right, ready? But enjoy. Be careful. It's going to be really hot. All right. I will go slow. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Ooh, hot. Good though. Very good flavor. <laughs> Once we get feeling back in our mouths, we're going to tell you. <laughs> this is fantastic. <laughs> It has that freshness, very that freshness, the greens, <laughs> very good. It's amazing. Honestly, do yourself a favor, do your family a favor, do people that like spinach, do anybody a favor and make them this meal. It's, it's beyond fantastic. So we are going to let you go, but I cannot thank you enough for being here. Please visit greektriangles.com. Thank correct? you. Yes. Yeah. Please go there. Um, if anything, just show some love. Find them on, are you Facebookable or uh, Instagramable? Yes, on Facebook, Instagram, Greek Triangles, uh, yeah. across the board. And um, Go to Greek Triangles, yes. give them some love, um, do yourself a favor, make these, subscribe, 
And also, if you have not already, please download the Optimize app, that O-P-T-A-M-I-Z, and it can be found at Google Play, as well as the App Store, and we will have this video on there, we will have this recipe on there, and you will be on there as well, but seriously, these are fantastic. So, thank you for having me on. Absolutely, fun. thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it, thank you. Awesome.